I know it's different for every one of us. What comes to my mind first is a beautiful, warm, sunny April day. It's an Easter Sunday. And I can see my sister Jolie, four years old, standing on our driveway on Grovewood Avenue in Parma. And she is outfitted in a beautiful white frilly dress. She has on white patent leather shoes, little white matching gloves and socks, the ones with the fringe. Oh, and Anne and a white purse that, of course, matched the shoes. You got the picture. That's what I see. And I see on her face this mischievous little grin. Now, we are waiting for our mom and dad to come outside so that we can get in the car and go to church. But she's looking at me with this mischievous little grin. And she turns, and she runs all the way back to the garage and inside. And I yell, Jolie, come back. We have to go to church. No response. I yell again. A little more than a minute later, she comes back. And now, the little grin is a full smile. And it's still mischievous. And she has both hands firmly on the purse. I said, Joe, what do you have in the purse? <laughs> and she walks over to me proudly. And she opens it up. And inside there is new life. Five baby field mice. <laughs> who until very recently were comfortably residing under a floorboard in the garage. <laughs> My mom arrived seconds later. <coughs> Let me just tell you. After seeing those mice, she was close to needing a resurrection of her <laughs> Now, even as a minister, that's the first thing that comes to my mind when I hear Easter. But immediately after that indelible image, in the very next moment, another image comes to mind. And that is one of an empty tomb. An empty tomb. Now, there are many places one can begin to enter into the Easter story. You could begin during that long night of prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, where while still dark, the chief priests and the temple police, yeah, they had police in their temple. Trust me, we're not doing that. No police. The chief priests and temple police led by Judas comes to arrest him, Jesus. These were the same people with whom he taught and prayed and communed for days on end at the temple. The same people, the same priests, the same police, the same disciples. <coughs> or one could begin with Peter while he was sitting in the courtyard of the high priest's home. This was the first place Jesus was held. And Peter denied knowing him three times. First, woman, I do not know him. To another, I am not one of them. And to a third, I am not with him. And then it is written, the cock crowed, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Can you 
sense the dynamic that existed at that moment between those two men? Have you ever been? Have you ever been there? Another place one could begin to enter into the Easter story is when Jesus was brought before Pilate. <coughs> Pilate was the governor of the state of Judea, within which Jerusalem was the major city. And Pilate questioned Jesus, but he found no fault in him. And he did learn this. He learned that Jesus was a Galilean. And Herod, the king of Galilee, was in town. So Herod sent him off. He passed him off to Herod. Not my problem. And he came before Herod. And Herod questioned him and mocked him. And yet he found no fault in him. He couldn't find anything to blame him for. So after mocking him, he placed an elegant, elegant robe upon him and sent him back to Pilate. Now are you beginning, beginning to get a, a sense of what it must have felt like to be roughly jostled from one trial to another to another. And when he went back to Pilate, Pilate still found no fault in him. None. And yet the crowd cried out for his execution. And they said, execute him, and in his place give us Barabbas, who was a convicted murderer. You see, it was the custom of Passover in Jerusalem that one prisoner could be released by the popular will of the crowd. <laughs> but someone had to die. And then, of course, there is the crucifixion at Golgotha. Golgotha means the skull. It was a hill designed for this particular purpose. And in Luke, we hear Jesus' words from the cross. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. What an amazing lesson in compassion and forgiveness we find in this part of the story. But as I shared, my next thought of Easter, after the mice, after my sister, is on that third day, the day following the Sabbath day, the day when, in the very early morning hours, the women who had come with Jesus from Galilee were returning to complete his burial ritual. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood before them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. At the very heart, the very heart of Easter is the process of resurrection. No matter what meaning you bring to this holiday, it is a resurrection story. And on this holy day, 
It is our resurrection story as well. It is yours and mine. We miss the essential organic essence of Easter. If we move through this period without asking this question, what is it that my heart yearns for, calls for, cries for resurrection? <coughs> what in me is ready to be resurrected? It could be a feeling once felt. It could be a belief once believed. It could be a dream once dreamed. It could be a relationship once had with another, with yourself. To be resurrected is to be reformed. Dictionary says it's also to be remembered. I like that. I like it to be remembered as if the very members of your body were no longer in harmony, were no longer in union, and they were being brought back together. But in a resurrection, what is created is not a duplicate of what was before, but a refinement of what can be. A resurrected body, mind, and heart is qualitatively different from what came before it. It doesn't even look the same. In the Gospel of John, Mary Magdalene looked into the empty tomb and seeing nothing there, she stood up and she turned and behind her she saw a man and she believed him to be the gardener. And she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where. And as the man said, Mary, she recognized him as Jesus. What is resurrected is qualitatively different than what comes before. It doesn't even look the same. In the Gospel of Luke, <coughs> on the same day that the tomb was found empty, two of Jesus' disciples were walking to a village called Emus. And while they were walking down this road, a stranger joined them and continued to walk. And later that night, they were sharing dinner together. And the stranger was the first to pick up the bread. And he blessed it. And he broke it. And as he gave it to them, they understood that this was Jesus. What is resurrected looks completely different than what comes before.